us to do is not logical for you to get done. Mm. Some of us right now are standing in front of this wall because some of the things God is asking for you to do in this season, it doesn't seem logical for you to do in this season. I'll give you some examples. God, God, you said my child will be delivered from drugs and alcohol, but in order for me to see the deliverance, I got to do what? You, 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 you said in order for my child to be delivered, you said my child will be delivered, but in order for my child to be delivered, I have to watch my child go through the valley? I, I, have to, I have to not do anything? I can't step in and fix it? All I have to do is I got to pray for my child? When I see my child in and out of prison, I, I, can't, I can't sit here and get upset. I have to sit back and just pray for him. Mm. Listen, I, I, oh, oh, you're telling me, God, in order for this to happen, I need to do this? I can't step in and do the logical thing, which is I can't protect my child, or I can't wring his or her neck when they're doing things that I ain't got no business doing? You're telling me to step back and pray and fast? God is saying, but I gave you the command already. I, I told you that you already got the victory. But in order to get the victory, this is what you need to do. How many of us are willing and able to do exactly what God has called us to do, regardless of how logical it may seem? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Or, God, you said you will provide miracles, financial miracles to my family. But in order for me to see this financial miracle, I have to pay you. I have to sow a $50,000 seed? Mm. Wait a second, God. You just said you're going to give, you're gonna, you're, 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 you're gonna give me a financial miracle, but in order for me to see the financial miracle, i got to sow a seed? I thought I should be able, I should, I should start stacking this paper, not, not, not giving out this paper. Mm, listen, when are we going to come to grips, men and women of God? When are we going to come to grips that we don't serve a God of logic? I need y'all to listen to me. I, I, are, are we, I, am I the only one in here ministering to myself? Listen, we need to understand that we don't serve a God of logic. God doesn't move on logic. I, I, I truly believe logic was created by man. Now, this is just Pastor Desmond's all talking, so don't take my words and go somewhere with it and say, hey, this is, this is law. But I truly believe that logic was created just so that man can justify what's going on in front of his eyes. Just so that man can justify what's going on in front of his natural eye. But God operates in the supernatural eye. So why are we asking God to do something for us naturally, right, or in the natural, when God operates in the supernatural? Amen? Well, I don't get it. So let's, let's continue moving forward. So Joshua chapter 6, verses 6 to 11. I'm going to read it in the New International Version. It says, so Joshua, son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, take up the ark of the covenant of the Lord and have seven priests carry trumpets in front of it. And he ordered the army, advance, march around the city with an armed guard going ahead of the ark of the Lord. When Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets before the Lord went forward blowing their trumpets, and the ark of the Lord's covenant followed them. The armed guard marched ahead of the priests who blew the trumpets, and the rear guard followed the ark. All this time, the trumpets were sounding. Now, check this out. It says, Joshua said, he commanded the army, do not give a war cry. Do not raise your voices. Do not say a word until I, until the day I tell you to shout, then you shout. So he had the ark of the Lord carried around the city, circling at once. Then the army returned to camp and spent the night there. So what's happening is Joshua is giving them directives. He's giving the army a directive. This is what you do, precise, don't move, don't do this until I tell you to do this. That was the first day. If you continue going, 12 to 14, it talks about it again. Joshua said it again. They, they went around the wall again. And they said this was the second day. Joshua continued to tell them, listen, do not do nothing, don't do the shouting until I tell you. They did this for six days straight. Every day they'll wake up in the morning, they'll get the Ark of the Covenant, and they'll walk around the wall. 
Then they'll come back. They'll be blowing their trumpets, walking around the wall with the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant represented God's presence. So whenever you had this Ark of the Covenant, it represented God was present, right? So they walked around, they marched around with the army, and they went back home and sat down and sleep. Next day, they did it again. Six days. But see, the thing I like about this is Joshua and the army following the instructions given by God. They not only believe what God told Joshua, but they had enough faith in Joshua, their leader. They had enough faith that if, that if Joshua said this is what God said to do, we're going to do it. But most of all, they, had, they, they, they marveled in the faith that Joshua had in God. So not only did they have faith in their leader, but they believed that their leader had, leader had faith in God. So it was a trickle effect. So I know for a fact that Joshua was telling me to do this, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get up and move. Because I believe my, the God in Joshua. How many of us have that same strength in their faith in God today? How many of us today have the same strength? How many of us' faith is so strong that if God tells you to do something, you're going to do it regardless of how it looks? You're, going to, you're just going to do it. How many of us? Or the faith in knowing that if God gives you instructions on your next move, your next decision, you can acknowledge it and conduct yourselves accordingly. So do you have enough faith in what God is telling you or the knowledge that you have in God that if he tells you to move, if he tells you to do something, if he's laying something on your heart to accomplish, you'll do it strictly off of the reason of your relationship with him and you know what he has planned for you. How many of us can conduct ourselves by faith? Now, I don't know about y'all. I don't know about y'all, but this, this, this past year, 2021 into 2021, now going into 2022. It's been a lot of things we've had to decide on faith. Mm, right. That's right. Listen, listen. It's been a lot of things we've had to decide on faith. And then we, we, did not, we didn't know what the outcome was going to be. But we had to step out on faith and get it done. Yeah, yeah, I got to step out on faith because I don't know if my child is going to be able to function during learning school virtually. Because my child is a, is a people person. They like to be around people. So now that you're pulling my child out of school and now they got to sit down in front of a computer for hours on a, in a day and then turn around and do assignments on the same computer, now they don't have the function that they used to have in school. I don't know if my child's going to be able to do it, but guess what? I'm going to step out on faith. Because I know that, that it's a reason why we're doing this. It's a reason why we're in this season at this particular moment. Or I, I, I'm so used to my job, but you know now my job is closing. Or they're making cutbacks because of the pandemic and because of the pandemic and the cutbacks. And since I'm brand new to this position, I'm brand new to this employment, they're going to cut me first. And since they cut me, now I, I gotta step out on faith because you know this this wasn't something that I could control. So I gotta step out on faith and, I, and, and believe that God is gonna do what He said He's gonna do. He's not gonna leave me nor forsake me. Amen. 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 So, but I got a question when it comes to us and following leadership, men and women of God. How many of us have walked away from a leader? Or let's just say minister, pastor, man, or woman of God that spoke into your life about a particular situation or decision. How many of us have walked away because they spoke into your life about a decision you had to make and it wasn't the decision that you wanted to make? It, 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 wasn't, it, didn't, it didn't pan out the way you were thinking. It didn't pan out what, how you wanted to end it. It, it, just, it was just something that, it was a total opposite of what you were wanting to do, but that leader told you to do the total opposite. But you walked away. You walked away from that leadership because you were even questioning, was it really from God? Was it really from God that, you know, God, I, I, you told me to start this business and, I, and I'm starting it. And then all of a sudden, this man and woman of God tells me, it's not time yet. It's not time to open the business. It's just time for you to start creating. It's not time for you to go forth in the business. It's just time for you to start creating. But but you said, God, that I was supposed to be a businessman. I, I'm supposed to be, I'm, my money's supposed to work for me. And I, I'm, I'm supposed to be, you know, you said that 2021 is the year of the entrepreneur. And, and, but now all of a sudden, this man or woman of God is trying to tell me not to move. Now I'm going to walk away because that ain't God. That, 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 that's not God. How, how many of us have been in that situation? 
or, or been in a position where we had to question what was coming out of this man's mouth was it really by God? Mm, yeah, yeah, y'all don't want to tell the truth in here. I'm going to raise my hand today. I I'm, I'm, guess I'm ministering to myself. Or question, as men and women of God, as leaders, as leaders, we must be very cognizant as God's people when under leadership spirituality, we adhere the man and woman of God because God is watching how you receive or embrace the word that is being spoken to you. So as we walk this world, as we walk this relationship, God is looking at how you are receiving what's coming out of the mouthpiece of his people. Because if you don't receive it, that's like you not receiving what God is saying to you. So think about what happens, or I'm going to turn it around on the other side for all my leaders, my pastors, my ministers out there. we got to be extremely cognizant that we don't allow logic of our circumstances to cloud God's instructions for his people. Yes. We have to make sure that we're not thinking naturally, mm -hmm. and we don't get in front of God's word, and then we end up clouding what God is telling or trying to get our people. Good. As you see in this season, there's churches all over the place. There's, there's, there's ministries all over the place. And there, the people are just confused. Because in this season, I'm sorry, but in this season, there's been a lot of people that have been thinking logically and not allowing God and not allowing their faith in God to move them in this hour. Because things just don't look the way it used to look. But that's just the least obvious thing Joshua, in this position, where Joshua is telling the army. Walk around this wall for seven days. Don't do the least obvious thing. Don't, 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 let's not fight them initially. Let's just walk around this wall for seven days. Let's walk around. Now check this out. Verse 15 through 19. It says, then on the seventh day, they got up early at daybreak. They got up early and marched around the city in the same way seven times. Because that was the instruction. God gave on the seventh day, you're going to walk around the same wall seven times, right? And the seventh time when the priest had blown the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, shout for the Lord has given you the city. Shout for the Lord has given you the city. Now mind you, they're, they're, they're marching around this wall seven days. And on the seventh day, the trumpet is being blown. And now Joshua has given them the command to shout. Now Joshua has given them the command to shout. Now, if I'm thinking about it, throughout the seven days, they, they, would, they really weren't saying too much. They wasn't saying too much. They, they, they were probably doing a lot of prayers, but it wasn't loud. It wasn't noisy. So imagine what this looked like. An army of men, an army of Israelites just walking around the wall. Not saying much. Just walking around the wall. This looks pretty crazy, don't it? I look foolish right now. It's a wall in the middle of me and I'm just walking around. If anybody sees this coming into here, that something is wrong with this guy. He's just walking around the wall. He's not saying nothing. He has a box in his hand, which is the Ark of the Covenant. He has a box and he's walking with this box, and, but he just looks crazy. He doesn't look logical. He doesn't look like he's supposed to look. He doesn't look ordinary. Why keep walking around this wall for, for, for he's been doing this for six days. Now on the seventh day, he's, he's doing laps. I see him more than once. What, what, what is really going on? And then now, on the seventh, he's shouting. Now Joshua's telling the army to shout. Check this out. The city and everything that is in it shall, that is, that is under the band, which is designated to be destroyed, right? This is Joshua saying, this everything that is designated to be destroyed to the Lord, only Rahab, the prostitute, and all the people that were in her house shall be allowed to live because she hid and protected messengers whom we sent. That's a whole nother sermon, brother. Rahab is a whole nother sermon. Trust and believe, trust and believe, amen? But as for you yourself, now check this out. Listen to what he's saying. 
He's saying, keep yourselves away from things under the ban which are to be destroyed so that you do not convict them and take some of the things under the ban for personal gain and put the camp of Israel under doom and destruction and bring disaster upon them. But he says all the silver and gold and articles and bronze and, and iron are holy and consecrated to the Lord. They shall go into the treasury. On the seventh day, there were detailed instructions, like I said. The instructions, I feel, were the most important. Most important about this day, the instructions, right? Joshua informed the army that everything other than the silver, the gold, Rahab, and her family were to be destroyed. But he said, don't take anything marked for destruction for yourself, for you may end up bringing disaster to all of Israel. Are y'all listening to that? Everything else, he's literally telling you know what to do. So stay focused on the mission. So what does that mean? What does that mean? So, so I'm telling you, man, don't touch that. The silver, the gold, the bronze, Rahab and her family, that's, that should be make sure it's protected. But I know you see that pot of money over there. I know you see that suitcase full of $1.5 million. You are not to touch that. You're not to touch it. Why? Why can't I touch that, Pastor Dez? You, you don't understand what I'm dealing with right now. That would help me out. Everything that you're telling us not to touch we got to give to God anyway. So I'm with you doing this, marching around this wall, and I see a pot of money, and I can't take it. The city's going to crack anyway. The city's about to fall according to God, right? So why can't I take this? But we have to understand is that there were things in that city that were tainted by the enemy. There were things in the city tainted by the enemy. And the problem is that, is that when we get off focus on the plan and the purpose God has for us, and we begin to take things that, that are not within the plan or the purpose, we begin to taint the plan and purpose that God has for our life. So God is telling you to go this way and not to go off course, but you see something that is tempting that way, so you'll just step out a little bit, grab what you need and get back on track and then continue moving. But little do you know that when you went off track just a tad bit to grab this little thing and come back, now you're, you're, the weight is off. Now, you're not, now, now the, track is, is you, the track can't hold your weight anymore because you grabbed something that you should have never grabbed. And now you're a little bit heavier than what you used to be. Now you're messing up the track. Now you're messing up the mission for everybody else behind you because you decided not to listen to God fully. Are y'all listening to me today? Are y'all listening to me today? Somebody say, now what? Now, now what? what? I'm going to tell you now. Watch this. When the trumpet sounded, the alarm, the army shouted, and guess what? When the men gave loud shout, the wall collapsed. It says the wall collapsed. They did exactly what Joshua told them to do. Exactly. And the wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight in and they took the city. It says they devoted, they devoted the city to the Lord and destroyed everyone with a sword, every living thing, every man, woman, young and old, cattle, sheep, and donkey. Pretty much everything that was living, other than Rahab and her family, were put to death. Hmm. Yeah, it was, it was pretty brutal back then. It was pretty brutal because God did not like what was going on in Jericho. And God already told Joshua, I'm going to give Jericho into your hands. But these are things you have to do. This is what you have to do. So do we see what happened here? Joshua received the word. He received specific instructions, specific instructions on how to accomplish the mission, right? Joshua then did exactly what God ordered him to do with no hesitation. He exactly did what God ordered him to do, and he didn't hesitate. He didn't question it. Or if he did question it, he was still doing what God told him to do. While he was kind of thinking about, this is crazy, but I'm going to still do it. Right? I'm going to still do it. And then look at the results. Look at what happened. Look at what Joshua did. 
after listening to God, not only after what after Joshua listening to God, but the entire army listened to God. The entire army listened to what Joshua told them to do. Nobody wavered. Nobody went, took, went off course. Nobody decided to take a little, a little trinket back with them. Nobody decided to do that because they believed, not only did they believe what Joshua was saying, but they believed that God told Joshua to do it because Joshua has, a, I, at this point in time, Joshua has a track record of God doing things that he says to do. So God already has a track record. If I believe what he says and do what he says, he's going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. If I follow instructions, how many of us in this room right now is hard to follow instructions? Oh, raise your How many people in here is hard to follow instructions? I, I'm going I'm to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. You're transparent today. It's, it's hard to follow instructions. They, they're telling me, Pastor, we need you to be just a, just a smidgen on time today. Because we've got things to do today. And I, I totally get it. And I said, yeah. Immediately I said, mm, I move with the Holy Spirit. I don't move with y'all's time. But I'm not being obedient to what's going on. See, what happens is we have, we have some special people in the audience today. We have some special, special people. My, 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 my brother, my blood brother now, he came from the same mother. Amen. Same mother. And his wife and his family is here. My brother Harold Scott Peacock Sr. and his lovely wife Daisy Junior. Peacock. No, no. Junior. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're senior. senior. My, my father, our father passed. He's a junior. He's a junior. He's the namesake. With his lovely wife, Daydream, and, and their children, my niece and my nephew, Maya and Alex, from all the way from New Jersey. All the way from New Jersey. Y'all give them a clap for God right now. They came all the way down to be here with us. And guess what? They have to leave today. They have to get back on a flight today and go back to Jersey. Aww. Yeah, got to go back to Jersey today. So they're like, Pastor, we need you to be a little bit, you know, come back on time a little bit. So I got to be obedient. I gotta follow instructions. Because if I sit here and I don't follow the instructions and I go off, what's gonna end up happening? They're gonna be late for their they flight. They're gonna be late for their flight. So now I have tainted what God's plan and purpose was for the Peacock family going back to Jersey. Mm -hmm. You see something simple like that? When we don't follow instructions? So I'm gonna follow instructions today. Because, but I want to see, I want to show you, I have an illustration. If somebody can help me today, somebody can help me. I got an illustration. I want to show you something. Because it's one thing to talk about this, but it's another thing to actually show it to you. It's another thing to actually show it to you. All right, Go ahead and bring right. it right here in the middle. All right, Pastor Jerry, with the wardrobe change. Oh, Lord bless you, Jesus. That's all right, Pastor. That's all right, Pastor. Dad, we're going to buy you some more. Right there. Right there. That's fine. Can I get some music? Can you pass it? I want y'all to pay attention to this wall. Pay close attention to this wall. Mm. See, some of us are standing in front of our own wall. See, this wall consists of things that is hindering you from achieving your true calling in God. This wall, this wall right here is stopping us from achieving our true purpose in God. Lack of motivation. Some of us, we blame the enemy for a lot of things. Some of us give the enemy way too much credit. That's right. Some of us give the enemy way too much credit. It's not always the enemy that, 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 that stops us from moving and progressing forward. Sometimes it's just our laziness. Sometimes it's just us being lazy. I don't want to get up this morning. Or I don't want to spend the time that you are asking me to spend with you, God, because it's so much more I have to do today. If I get up early and handle it, I'll have enough time in the day to handle what I need to handle. And I don't need to spend that hour with you like I usually spend because there's a lot going on. I'm not motivated enough to, to handle the things that you want me to handle. Lack of boldness. 
I'm too ugly. I'm too ugly. I didn't get the role because they said I didn't look the part. People laugh and they joke at me. They tease me in school, Lord. When I'm in high school, when I'm in junior high school, when I'm in middle school, Father God, I get teased because of the way I look. I get teased because of the way I dress. I get teased because of the way I sound. I don't, I don't sound like everybody, Father. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Those of us right now are sitting, looking at this wall, and we can relate to almost everything that is written on this wall. Those of us that are sitting and viewing from this area right now online can relate to everything that is going on in this wall. God is saying what you need to do in this hour is begin to walk around this wall. And as you begin to walk around this wall, God is saying you need to begin to pray. You need to begin to pray as you walk around this wall. As you walk around this wall, you begin to pray. Because what you're doing is you're putting all of your issues, you're putting all of your concerns, you're putting all of your the, the, the bad things and the ugly things that you're dealing with, you're putting it in the middle. And you're praying around it. Yeah. You're praying around what's going on with you right now. You're praying around it. You, instead of it taking hold of you and taking hold of your circumstances, you're putting it all in one section and you begin to pray around it. You begin to read your word, open up your Bible, and you begin to start speaking scriptures. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You said in your word, Lord God, that the weapon may form, but it may not cross me. So these are the weapons that have been formed against me, Father. But even though I know there are weapons that are formed against me, I know they will not prosper. So I will stay steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in you. And I begin to walk around this door. I walk around this wall, and I'm walking, and I'm praying. I'm walking, and I'm praying. I'm walking, and I'm praying. I'm walking, and I'm praying to, to the average person that looks stupid, to the average person who looks dumb, to the average person that looks like Desmond is crazy right now. Why is he walking around this wall? Why is he walking around this wall? Because guess what? I relate to every single thing that is written on this wall. And I walk around this wall, and I begin to pray and praise God. I begin to call everything that is out there, and I say, God, have your way. Break through it right now. I'm looking at my past. My past has been holding me back from what God is calling me to do. And every time I move forward, somebody's reminding me of my past. Somebody's reminding me of the mistakes that I've made. And every single time I get reminded, I pull myself back into the hole, thinking that I cannot be bold, thinking that I cannot be the man that God has called me to be, thinking I cannot be the pastor God has called me to be. Somebody always reminds me, and even when nobody's talking, I'm reminding myself of the past. And I pull myself back. God is saying in this moment, in this season right now, begin to walk around your issues. Because that wall is built. And as you walk around, you begin praying and you begin praising God. Because when you, like I said in the beginning, when you praise God, it confuses the enemy. And every so often you get a shake. You continue to praise God. You continue to pray. You continue to pray. You continue to pray and walk and get a shake. You continue to shake. You'll see. You'll begin to praise. You'll know what's going on inside of you, but you know that's not you. You know that's not what God has called you. You see, you begin to pray. And it continues to shake. It continues to shake. And then some of us on that seventh day, some of us on the seventh day right now, you've been walking around these issues in your head all day, all week. And some of us are on the seventh day. And God is saying, in that moment, you need to walk around this thing seven times. You need to be praying, God, I thank you. I worship you. There's nobody like you, Father God. You stand in a class all by yourself, Lord God. Decrease in me, Father God. Crucify this flesh in me, Lord God. Increase in me, Lord. Do in me what you can't do in man, Father God. Do in me what I can't do for myself, Lord God. Do in me what I cannot do for myself in the name of Jesus. There's nobody like you, Father God. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. I am not my past. I am not old. I don't have lack of confidence. I don't have no self 
tough from you. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. You're able to take back what the enemy took from you. And now you see that wall, you're able to look at it. And you're able to jump on it. You're able to step all over it. Because you know that's not you anymore. That's never been you. That's been the enemy holding you back from what yes, God has called God. you to be. Some of us have that wall right now in our homes. God is saying in this moment, some of y'all have the walls in your home. Some of y'all, God is saying the wall is your home. God is saying for some of you all, you all need to get back to your house. Uh, some of you need to walk around this wall, walk around your house. Walk around your house and begin to pray. God is saying walk around your house and begin to pray. Some of you all may need to walk around the outside of your house. Some of you need to walk around the inside of your house and begin to pray and ask God to do something. Begin to pray like you've never done before. See, sometimes we're asking God to do some things and God is asking you to do that's something that's unnatural. God is asking you to do something that's going to make you look stupid in front of man. God is going to ask you to do something that's not going to look, make, it's not going to look right in front of people. Imagine when people see you walking around your house. And you're just sitting there walking and praying to God. They're going to say, Matt looks stupid. Kashantra looks stupid. Why is she sitting there walking around the house? But guess what? Things happen differently, Matt and Kashantra, when you're walking around your house holding hands together. Things happen differently when you are on one accord and you're walking around your house with your hands held. And you're praying to God and asking him to do some new things in your life. Things begin to change and switch for God's glory. Carol and Daisy, when you walk around your house and you begin to praise God, imagine what God is going to do not only for you, but imagine what God is going to do for your children. Imagine what God is going to do for your child. Imagine what God is going to do for your life. Imagine what God is going to do in the future. You got to walk around that wall. Some of us are on day one. Some of us are on day two. Some of us are on day three. Some of us are on day four. Some of us are on day five or six, but there's many of us in this room right now that are on day seven. And some of us need to walk around that wall seven times. Ah, some of us need to walk around that wall seven times. And when we get to that seven time, we need to show up. We need to give God a praise so loud. We need to be yelling and pleading and praising God so unfortunate, so differently, so, 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 so peculiar to man that it gets the attention of God. And when it gets the attention of God, God begins to send angels for you. He begins to send angels for you. And the request that you want, the request that you've made known, God is doing it for you. In the middle of it, in the middle of it, in the middle of it, as you're shabbatim, the wall begins to crumble. See, it's not by chance when people say when you're nervous, go somewhere and yell, you ever heard that? You're nervous. Just go somewhere and just scream really loud. Or if you're mad at something, just scream really loud. It kind of takes the tension on the ease off a little bit. Well, let me tell you something. When you Shabbat, Shabbat is a yellow. It's a yellow praise. It's a yellow praise. So when you're yelling and you're praising while you're yelling, imagine what you're doing. You're releasing. You're releasing everything that has held you back. And you're releasing it with a praise. You're releasing it with an exaltation. You're releasing it so that way when you're done releasing all of that stuff that has held you bound, and you release it with something that's positive, God begins to deposit something inside of you more powerful than you can ever imagine. The anointing gets stronger. The faith gets stronger. So when you see us in here and we're yelling and we're praising God, God may look crazy to you at first. But now that you realize when you open your mouth and you proclaim and you progress, you confess God to be who he is. Things happen in your atmosphere. Yes. Things begin to shift in the atmosphere. Things begin to shake the or the soil begins to get disrupted. Because the enemy knows that you are pleading God and you are calling him by his name. And when you call him by his name, demons have to flee. The enemy has to leave. The enemy has to move away from you because you're calling the leader. You're calling somebody who he knows is greater than him, that has more power than him. And the wall begins to crumble because the enemy built the wall. But God can destroy what the enemy built. The enemy built the trap, but God can destroy the trap. God can dismantle the 
the trap. So if that's you, and if you can relate to anything on that wall, what I need for you to do right now is stand to your feet. Stand to your feet if you can relate to anything that was on that wall. Or you got something that's in your mind that's been a wall to you. And I don't care where you are, I need you to do one full lap around this place. I need you to do one full lap, one full lap. Y'all can go ahead and follow me, follow me, sweetie. Just do one full lap. What happens is, what happens is when we are walking, while we're walking, we're praying. <laughs> while we're walking, we're praying and we're praising God. While we're walking, we're asking God to do exactly what we want him to do. Father, we thank you right now. We praise you right now. Lord God, you said in your word that if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart, Lord God, that you are, you are the Lord God. You are the utmost. You are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, Father God. You said you can do it, Lord. You said that if two or more gathered in your name, you'll be in the midst. So I say, Father, welcome. Do some new things in our life right now. Do some things in my family's life right now. Change it in my family right now. Change me, Father God. Change me. Change me. Change me. Do it now. Break the yoke. Break the yoke, Father God. Break the yoke. Break the yoke. Break the yoke. Deliver. 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 Save me right now. Save my children right now. Do it, Father. In the mighty master's name of Jesus Christ. And as you reach that, that last circle, as you reach that last circle, as you turn around that last lap, what I need for you to do is give God a Shabbat like never before. Give God a Shabbat like never before. Praise God like never before. Praise God like never before. Open your mouth and praise God like never before. Open your mouth and proclaim God to be who he is. Open your mouth and praise and worship God. And watch the walls begin to crumble. You're feeling a little lighter because the walls are crumbling. You're feeling a little lighter because the weight is falling. You're feeling lighter because now you've got the confidence. You're feeling lighter because now God is giving you the anointing to move forward. So praise God like your life depended on it. Praise God like your children's lives depended on it. Praise God like your, like your child depended on it. Praise God like your future depended on it. Praise God like your marriage depended on it. God is saying in this season, everyone in here is the least obvious choice. Yes, everyone in here is the least obvious choice. Man wouldn't regularly pick you. A man wouldn't pick you to do what God is calling you to do in this hour. A man wouldn't pick you. But God is saying, I'm choosing you in this hour. I have chosen you in this season. And now it is time for you to push forward. It is now time for you to walk in what I've called you to be. It is now time for you to walk in what I've called you to do. God is saying, no more will you be distracted by the things of the enemy. No more will you be distracted by the things of the enemy. God says, now officially, your walls are crumbling down. Your wall is officially crumbling down. Some of y'all, y'all even feel differently right now. Some of y'all even feel differently right now. Some of y'all even feel differently right now. The enemy hates it. The enemy hates it. And what I want you all to do, and I'm going to leave at this, because I can't stress this enough. God is not looking for the ordinary praise. He's not looking for you to praise him like you used to praise him. He's not looking for that, 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 that comfortable praise. He's not looking for that cute praise. He's not looking for that praise that, you know, I may look crazy in front of people because I'm trying to be hard. I'm trying to be a man. I, I, I can't raise my hands like that because, you know, people may look at me funny. God is looking for you to praise him like David praised him. David praised God out of his clothes. David didn't care what people said about him. David didn't care what people talk, how they talked about him, what they said. And David was the biggest, the biggest sinner on the face of this planet. But guess what? David had a, had a heart after God's own heart. He was a man after God's own heart. And David knew that if I praise God, things happen in the atmosphere. David knew that if I begin to praise God, things have to change. Things have to change because if I don't, that means God's word will be void. And he will be a liar. And God is not a liar. So God is looking for you right now. Those of you that are viewing from us, wherever you are. God is looking for you to give him a praise like you never praised him before. God is looking for you to praise him like you've never praised him before. If you never, not used to raising your hands. God
God is waiting for you to raise your hands. If you're not used to yelling his name, God wants you to yell his name. If the least obvious worship for you is to worship him like this, God is looking for you to worship him on the least obvious way. He's looking for you to worship him like you've never done it before. If it's obvious for you to just keep your mouth closed and just clap your hands, God is looking for you to do the least obvious thing, which is open up your mouth and confess God as who he is. If the, if the obvious thing for you is just to sit there with your mouth closed and your eyes closed, God is saying, I'm looking for you to do the least obvious thing. I want you to praise me so much to the point where people are looking at you and they're shocked at how you're praising me. Because when you praise me that way, it becomes like a ping pong effect. The anointing flows from that person and it goes to this person and it goes to that person and it goes to that person and it continues moving. And then before you know it, the atmosphere is filled with praise. And then the Holy Ghost begins to do something awesome and brand new. So on the count of three, on the count of three, and I'm going to go, I need you to think about everything that's been said today. Think about that wall. Think about that wall that you have up, young man and young lady. Think about that wall, mama. Think about that wall you got up. Think about that wall you got up, sir. Think about that wall. Think about that wall. Think about that wall. That people are still looking at you for what you've done. Not for what you're about to do. People are still looking at you for what you did, not what you're about to do. Think of the wall that you put up on yourself, thinking that you can accomplish this differently because of things that I've done and what I just got through. Think of the wall. Think of the wall, Harold. Think of the wall. Think of the wall that you don't think you can you can amount to it. You can't push forward in it because you don't look a certain type. Think of that wall because you feel because of your elements you can't make it happen. Think of the wall because of your healthy foot, you can't make it happen. Think of that wall. God wants you to think of that wall because as you begin to think of that wall and praise God like never before, your wall is going to crumble. And the things that I've laid on your heart, the say of the Lord, the vision that I've given you, the say of the Lord, will come to pass. You will never have to lack for anything. There will be no lack in your life, the say of the Lord. When you know, when you begin to praise me, God says, when you begin to open your mouth and you don't care about what's going on around you, God says, watch what I do in your wife's life. Watch what I do in your children's life. If you think you're blessed now, just wait what I got for you, the say of the Lord. Wait the scholarships that I have for you. Wait for the money that's coming into you. You think that business, you think you're only there to spin records. God is saying, I'm going to give you a business. There's been a business that's been in your brain, and you've been afraid to do it. You've been afraid to go at it, but the business has been sitting in you. I don't know what I'm talking about right now, bro, but there's been a business inside of you, and you're afraid to have that business because you have seen business falls. You've seen businesses that have shattered. You've seen businesses that have gone belly up, and you say, God, I don't want this. God, I can't do this for my family. God is saying, because of your diligence, because you're obedient to your family, because who you've been as a father, who you've been as a husband, God says, I am honoring that now, the say of the Lord. So God says, begin to create that business. Write the business plan and watch what I do in this hour, the say of the Lord. But that has to happen when you praise me. That has to happen when you have the confidence in me and not the confidence in man. Because man is going to fail you, the say of the Lord. But God says, my word will not fail. My word will not fail. My word will be abundant and will return back. It will return back everything that he says, the say of God. So at this moment, one, think about the wall. Two, think about the wall crumbling. Three, give God praise in this place.
are more than enough. You are more than enough. God says you are more than enough. Thank you. 
There's an anointing on your life. There's an anointing on your life. God is saying, now pray to me with confidence. God is saying, now daughter, pray to me with confidence. God says, that's been the, the missing ingredient. God says, I hear your prayers. God says, now pray, pray to me in the confidence that I've given you.
Is there anybody that would like to become a partner of the Excelling Church Georgia campus where your life really gets better from here? Yes. It's something every time. You can never expect the same thing because you don't know what God is going to do. Honestly, Pastor Desmond did try to stay in a time, but when God leads, he leads. But he'll make a way for us to get on time. Amen. Amen. So that's not no even traffic. Issue. No traffic. No traffic. Amen. Name. Declare the decree. Oh, that's what we do. Amen. But for those of you that would like to become a partner of the Excelling Church Georgia campus, we would gladly welcome you to yes. the door of Hatton 014 Avenue. Do not forget it. It's okay. I'll email it to you. I'll Snapchat it to you. I'll Facebook it to you. I'll Messenger it to you. Don't worry. I'll get all your numbers. I'll, I'll, I'll track you down. I'll bring you to the building. You need a ride? You need a ride? I'll give you a ride. Amen. So, <laughs> from, from New Jersey, I, I had to fly you down and then take group transportation and then I'll pick you up and then I'll take you there. That'll work. Amen. Amen. And for those of you that would like prayer, you are more than welcome to come up here. We would love to pray on your behalf. We have plenty of intercessors that are partners of the Selling Church Georgia campus that would love to pray on your behalf. And... For those of you that like to give your life to God, you want to dedicate your life to God. You want to get saved to God. You can do that as well. You can do that as well. Don't let this, don't let this day pass. Don't let it pass. Amen. Amen. So those are your choices. If that is you, come on up, please. Amen. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid. There is no time like another. No time like the present. That's right. Amen. You know what I'm going to say, Holy Spirit? It's okay. It's okay. They love me anyways. All right. So we are not going to, oh, for those of you that are online, go ahead and fill out the link that is below that has just dropped down by our social media team. If there's a prayer you would like, that would be dropped down in the social media team as well. Don't want to leave y'all. But that's it. Let's go ahead and give y'all some prayers so we can walk out and have the rest of the week to see the amazing one. Ready? Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this moment. Thank you for excelling us. Thank you for giving us the building. Thank you for having a place for your people to call home, a permanent home, dear God, not a temporary. I thank you, Father, that you have blessed us thus far. I thank you that you are able to touch the people that come and go here, dear God. And I thank you that their, their seed that has been sown is planted onto the fertile ground to where we are able to purchase this building and it brings back to you in your name only. I thank you, Father, that we are building this kingdom up with you in it, dear God, that has already been established. And we pray for each and every person that is here today and that is to come. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You are dismissed. Oh, anybody? Yes? Oh, and the fire is over here to the left, amen. <laughs> All right, we can go ahead and close out. If we could, social media team, turn off the one with the ring light. Amen. And that is all, you guys.